Hello and welcome to IMAP, the channel that not only tells you that, well, I'm Matt, but I made a thing. This month, I'm showing you how I'm recycling my old failed prints. Let's get to it. Alright, if you guys know anything about 3D printing, you know that it's fantastic for creating stuff, but it also produces a lot of failed prints, stringy pieces of crap, and when I say a lot of waste, I mean like, this is hardly half of it. Just mm -hmm. failed prints, junk, crap. And so I'm trying something that I saw on Devon from Make Anything's channel, which is to melt these down with a heat gun and make some blanks. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, wow, what a great idea. Let's make some numbers. So that's what I've been doing. All right, now, all right, now these stringy bits and these rafts and stuff are really easy to melt down with the heat gun. They melt down pretty easily. But old prints, they're rigid, they're tough, they take ages to melt down. So what you want to do, is you want to get something sharp or blunt, so you want to either smash them down with a hammer, or you want to cut them into little bits. Now what I've been doing, getting a pair of tin snips, because that's what I've got on hand, just grabbing it, and just brute force snapping it. So now what I've gathered is you want a bunch of just random mix matches of colour, but all even. You don't want one colour to dominate at all. Now, now I'm gonna. There's two settings. Warm. I put it on the first setting just to melt them together, and then I put it on the second setting so I can really melt down the second prints. Let's do that. Now whilst you're doing this, you are going to find that when you're starting, you are going to lose some. They are going to spread out, but you'll find that once it gets to a certain temperature, they all shrink and like glue together. And that's when the rafts and the brims are really good because they glue all the failed prints into one glob, which you can then turn up the speed and really focus that heat. So now it's like stuck almost together. I'm going to turn it this heat up. Now you notice I've got a chisel, and like those videos on Facebook you've seen, I'll be scraping some of this and folding it in, almost like making candy. You might have seen that I was using the chisel there, moving around just a little bit as I was getting closer to the end. Now you don't want it to be like gummy, you don't want it to like slowly smear, you want it to be a liquid. Because when you squish down you want it to fill in all the gaps and be nice and smooth on either side. And so that's why when you can pull it with a chisel and it's gummy, you want to just keep going, you're getting close. But then you stop, I'm going to put my weight on, push down. Then I've got some weights just off to the side. I'm going to put on that and push all my weight onto it. Just to really smear it out. Then I'm going to let that cool for a while. Alright, time's passed. I'm going to take the weights off. Pop the transformer out. table's still a bit warm, but if you get a chisel, just work your way around, it should pop off. And there we go, a nice unique little blank that we can cut some words or letters or shapes out of. Now this side seems very bland because the white was on top. 
But then this side also seems very green because we didn't smush around that giant chunk of green. See, right here looks very nice because it's just random and whatnot. And here is where I pulled the chisel through. But this slab of green is just a slab of green. It's not really exciting or interesting. And so that's where you've got to experiment. And that's where I've come up with some of these, which is comparable. I had a lot more colours and shapes and whatnot in this one compared to this one, whereas I just had big blocks. They're all unique, they're all interesting, and they can all be used to make other stuff. Now as a little bonus, if you think yours isn't as unique or interesting as it could be, what I found is you want to put it down so it's completely dry, uh, cool now. I've got a handful of just random bits. I'm just going to shove those on top, melt them, and let's see what, what it does. Look how much more interesting it is. See, this side's still dull, but this side looks fantastic. So now, let's put some numbers into these, cut them out, turn it into a clock. Alright, so now that I've got all these blanks, I've gone into Fusion 360, and I drew a bunch of numbers, which I've then cut out. And now, I'm just going through, taking the blanks that I've made, tracing the numbers over the top, and the sharpie, and then I'll cut them out. Let's time lapse through this. All right, so I've just completed. I've got all my blanks with their number written on. I don't know if you can see, but that's a two. Some of them are a bit harder to draw on than others because it's not exactly flat, but they look pretty good. So now I gotta get a hacksaw and just cut them out and then spend four years sanding. Let's do that. Alright, so I'm halfway through cutting out my blanks. You can see the nice ones there. Now I've been cutting them primarily with the hacksaw, the hacksaw, but I've also been using tin snips because sometimes the hacksaw just isn't sharp enough or it doesn't really want to go through the big blobs and so you use the sheer force of the tin snips get through that bit and then go to the hacksaw but as you can see from these the cut numbers they're looking pretty good even on the rough cutout so after i cut them all out i'm gonna uh, file them down and then sand the edges then i'm gonna put them into a clock i'll see you when that's done all right, so it's the next day after the previous clip. That's why I'm wearing the hat. It's different. Get over it. I finally finished cutting out all the rough shapes. And I've gone through and I've drilled holes in, like, the numbers that need holes. Everything apart from the four. So I've drilled holes in the eight. But the four is a tiny hole. So I need to drill a tiny pilot and then get a really tiny file in there to file it out. But that leads into what I'm doing next. I am... About to just put them in the vise, get a file, get them down to a nice flat edge on every side or curved, and then I'm going to pull out the sandpaper and sand it. Alright, so I lost the footage. As you can see, I'm just making this. I'm currently edi editing the video and realized that I lost it. But I lost the part where I was filing them down and putting it up on my wall and everything. But as you can see now behind me, they look pretty good. Like, all individual pieces and oh there you go focus I got the four pretty good I went and got a nail file a little metal nail file and all the hard to reach places I used the file mm -hmm. for that so I got and then I just drew a circle around on my wall and I've stuck the numbers on just with double-sided tape now I'm gonna I'm just waiting for a clock mechanism to arrive and it should be pretty perfect. And you'll see a montage of it working when that arrives. And 
that's it. Like, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.